You're going to find out today how things that look like would take a lot of your time and is not going to generate revenue, is actually going to generate revenue in ways that are unforeseeable at first. Now, I'm going to give you some actual groups where you can consider, because no matter where you're from, whether it's Illinois, whether it's San Diego, whether you're in Chicago, Dallas, um, Albuquerque, there's some group out there that values your experience as an executive recruiter. What's good about an advisory group is that you get to meet like-minded people, uh, speak to executives while you're not in the sales mode. One of the best places that I found that you can talk to executives using a backdoor strategy, not cold calling, not recruiting, not picking up the phone, not even marketing a candidate, is by meeting those executives as they participate in things that executives do during their out extracurricular activity. And a lot of them, during their extracurricular activity, participate in church groups, scouting events, uh, you know, different charities and church and, and fundraising charities. Um, the backdoor strategy puts you in contact and talking to individuals who might not only be executives that could give you job openings, but also a source of unexpected candidates. Computer or business trade schools. Now, these are the, um, you know, n- not the community colleges, but the, uh, you know, sort of like the two-year schools where you get certificates, you get business certificates, that type of thing. Job groups, resume workshops, church-sponsored career events. Um, I've been a bit a- big advocate during my career of participating in church-sponsored uh, career events and job networking groups, and, and it, it, it's had a very surprising um, result of actually exposing me to business opportunities I would have never dreamed of. Colleges, two-year and four-year colleges. Colleges always have some sort of committee, some sort of outreach group. They actually seek, want, and welcome uh, the input from the business community. And who's better to represent the business community than a personnel staffing consultant or an executive recruiter who might be working in IT, might be working in engineering, might be working in chemistry, and knows the landscape of the job market in maybe a two- or three-county area. State and county employment services. In New Jersey, we, we had what was called work Force investment groups. These were boards and community organizations that were responsible for telling the local area colleges, two-year colleges, four-year colleges, secretarial business insurance, real estate schools, what the trends were in terms of what the local job community wanted in terms of talent and participating. And, you know, someone from a recruiting background is always going to be welcome in this type of group. And almost every state has some sort of employment service. At the employment services meeting, guess what? happens. They train you on resume writing, on interview skills, and everything that you and I do every single day. Putting your name out and volunteering for something like this, for an employment services volunteer, is a great way of getting exposed to a whole different group of people. A lot of those people were former CFOs, chief information officers, chief operation officers, who happen to be down on their luck. What better way can you possibly get than helping a CEO, CFO, CIO who is down on his luck in between jobs? No, all the other recruiters are saying, well, he's just the dreg of society. I'm not going to help him. And you're the one guy who shows up at a meeting and decides to help out, even if it's just helping him put his resume together, helping with his interview skills, helping with uh, you know, formatting maybe a cover letter or, or a thank you note. When that person gets hired, and eventually he or she will, the first recruiter that they're going to think of is the person that helped them out at the time that no one else wanted to talk of them. Political, religious, and civil, civic groups, I put an asterisk in front of it because you have to be careful. You have to kind of be careful of dragging your business into some of those sensitive uh, type of organizations. Now, I'm not saying this, this will replace cold calling. It's not going to replace marketing. It's not going to replace all the difficult stuff that we do all the time, but it will supplement it. It's a very easy way to take a couple hours during every two or three months and supplement everything else that you're doing.